Bad Batch, season one. Yeah, season one, I like that. Season two, honestly, keep it where it's at. I would put it right here, personally. No, no. It is D tier. It's C tier. Are you it's... kidding me? All right, Obi-Wan. It's B. No, it's it's B. It's B. It has to be behind Boba Fett. <laughs> it has to be. <laughs> The Emperor has foreseen a new threat rising against him. The Podwans Podcast. How's it going, everybody? Welcome in today for episode 111 of the Pod Ones Podcast. I'm your host, Char Char J, joined by my co-host, Jedi Master Eggs and Harith Productions. Today, Harith prepared a tier list for us. It's just going to be us yelling, screaming, crying, throwing up about where we rank the Star Wars movie as a whole. And let me preference this. We all have to come to a consensus. This isn't our own my ranking or or Harry's ranking or Charles ranking. It is the Pod One's ranking of Star Wars. All right. Starting with the film that started it all off, Star Wars A New Hope. Um, me personally, I think it's A tier. Agreed. I would put it B tier. Like, what are you comparing it to? Empire Strikes Back. Okay. I will concede it's an A, but I would say it's a lower A. Empire, we already know where it's going. I think it belongs in S tier. You know it's an S tier. It is the best movie in the Star Wars universe. We all agree on that. And... Okay, Return of the Jedi. B. I have a B as well. I would say it's better than A New Hope, but I guess I am just wrong. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. There's a lot of memorable moments. It's just Empire and A New Hope are just better movies. In my opinion, I think it's more rewatchable than the other two. I, I would agree with you, Luke, that Return of the Jedi is the most rewatchable. But like, if I had to put it on like what I think is the best of the trilogy, I would put it like this. You know, that's fair. All right, Phantom Menace. My personal opinion, I give it B tier. <sighs> I would give it C. I'm putting it C. I mean, it has the best lightsaber fight in the prequels. We can agree to disagree on that one. We're saving that for a future episode. Uh, Attack of the Clones. I would put it behind Phantom Menace. Agreed. Because of sluggish in the first half of the movie, but after the sand people, it starts to pick up. And I think if the second half of the film was just Geonosis, I think it would be higher. Attack of the Clones is very messy. Yeah, it can be messy. I agree with that. All right, now let's let's, let's, let's let the real band it off. Revenge of the Sith. I want to put it S tier, but it's not an S tier movie. It is not an S tier movie. I have it B. We're in the same boat. Okay, I was going to say B too. I have it behind Return of the Jedi. All right. I know I'm going to get overruled, but my heart says S, but I know it's going to be A. No, it's a, it's B. To me, it's C. <sighs> Oh, we're all at different ends of the extreme. It's better than Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones, but I don't think it's better than Revenge of the Sith. I think it should be a low B then, because I think if we're all at different ends of the extreme, if you char C, you're B, and I'm S, it levels out. Uh, Rogue One. I think it's an A tier movie. Rogue One for me is B tier. Do not have it over Return of the Jedi. I, and I don't think, well, actually, no, and I don't think it's better than Revenge of the Sith. I'm not trying to fold the peer pressure, but I, I would say if it was my own personal ranking, I would put it at A, but if we're putting it on this ranking, I would put it at B. Okay, no, 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 that's fair. We can restructure that's everything fair. after no, the that's fair. done. Last Jedi, is for me, it's A tier. It's B. I think it's behind Rogue One. To me, it's not as good as Return of the Jedi, but it's better than Revenge of the Sith. I think I would restructure yeah. it like this. That's personally how I would do it. If, if we're going, if I'm being, if I'm, I'm trying to be, like, I'm subjective, obviously. All so am I. <laughs> it's like, I'm trying to be subjective, but I'm also trying to be objective. I'm like, I'm trying to like mold my two sides because my brain is going like one way, but my, my, act, like, like the other brain's going, well, this is how the film is. <laughs> okay. Solo. Solo D tier. It's better than Attack of the Clones, but not better Solo than is my least favorite. Is. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with it being above Attack in between, of the Clones. In uh, uh, between, being lean. in between, Rise of Skywalker. I'll put it at high C. I would put it in C tier, but it's above Phantom Menace. Agreed. I would put it above the two prequels. I put it like this, personally. The Clone Wars okay. movie is D tier. I will not hear any arguments. Uh, I will push back. That on resolves. That. that resolves. It's D tier. Uh, no, 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 no. Hear me out. If you don't have the Clone Wars movie, you don't have a Sokatana. Yeah. It could have just been folded in Clone Wars Season 1. It could have been, but it wasn't. Bro, Luke is like, oh, it, just, it looks like a movie. It should be in the cinemas. I'm completely fine with it being on D tier, but I do think it should be a low C, a high D. It's going to be high D. That's how I'm seeing it. Okay. There's, right. not, there's not going to be much in D. Anyway. All right. <sighs> Clone Wars Season 1, low C. Season 1 is D. <laughs> season 1 is D. Are you <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> No, season one is not good. Clone Wars does not get good until season three. I will preface this right now. Ah, so one and two for good. me are D tier. 
uh, I will push back on two. that. Ryloth, season the Ryloth arc, the Ryloth arc. arc. And that was the what got me into Clone Wars. And I'm Ry saying it is a D tier. So I personally, in, in D tier, I would put the Clone Wars season one above the Clone Wars movie. Personally, I think there's some more interesting and stuff. And you get on. dominance. You get Domino Squad, too. That's no, you only get one episode of Domino Squad. Domino Squad, yeah, the, so? the, the rest of the good arcs in season three. Eat my ass, droid bait. It's going D tier. <laughs> D for droid bait. <laughs> season two is C, low C, high D. Fine. Yeah. It'll be behind Attack of the Clones. Like, I remember when I was first on Pod Ones and we were going through season one and two of Clone Wars. That was, that was a drag until we got to season three. It did. It did drag a little bit. Season three, I give that B tier. Oh, yeah. B tier. Because, I mean, it does have, it has the more, it has the Mortis arc. It has the uh, Satine arc. No, you get the one episode of Satine. Satine's in season two. Oh, so, okay. Then season two needs to be a little bit higher. That's that uh, that arc itself sets up a lot. One arc does not save the whole thing. Like I said, the Boba Fett arc is at the end of season two, and it does not save it for me. That's I, I like actually, the word it is. I I would personally put season two above Attack of the Clones. We'll keep it under Solo. Wait, where did we put season three? Season three B, B tier. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Next I agree. Row one. Yes. Okay. Just making sure. Okay. So season four is. See, I've got to go back and look at the art. B tier. Aura. That's that's above season three. It's above season three, but it's B tier. I think it's better than Rogue One because you have the slave arc. You have Umbara. Bounty Hunter Obi Wan. The Maul Return arc. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's above Rogue One. It's so fun. We haven't talked about Clone Wars on on Pod Ones in such a long time. But the thing is, okay. So the reason why that I wouldn't, I would put it above season three, but not above Rogue One, is you know what I'm about to bring Are up. You I know. Bring up Andor. No, Mon Cala. Mon Cala is such a horrible start to the season. Season four is good, but it, it like it, there are some arcs that drag it down. The droid arc, that one kind of sucked. But like after that, there weren't a there, there weren't a lot of misses. Wow. Season five, A tier. Season five of Clone Wars is S. Wow. It has my personal favorite arc in all of Clone Wars, which is Mandalore arc. Char, I will have to preference this. It has the droid arc. D Squad makes it better. That's why it's not S tier. But it's A tier. Ford into the black. I summon you. <laughs> I need your help now. We need your help. There's no way I'm gonna handle these two buffoons telling me the D squad is bad. No, I say it's above. I say it's A tier. It's above a new hope. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I, I 100 that's agree my, that. And that's my 100%. final stance. It's better than a new hope. I, this feels wrong. This just feels wrong. It doesn't feel right. Dude, dude, everything in this thing feels wrong to me but you know yeah, what i'm making the fact that luke like tried vouching for season two for the satine arc but then he like with satine in season five totally appropriate that you're vouching for that i love that i love the fact that you put it above a new hope season five of clone wars that's what makes clone wars clone wars honestly one i i know with everything in b tier i know what i'm about to say doesn't make sense but season six for me feels like an a tier there are so many good arcs in season six you got the orders arc you got the yoda arc you got Anakin, Obi Wan uh, facing Dooku on uh, the Lost Ones, the Lost, Lost Ones, ones like, on Obadiah. Like, yeah, like I know you're about well, Mason Jar Jar, but Mason Jar Jar is a fine arc. It's not like I wouldn't say it's as low as Mon Cala, and I would put it on the same level as D Squad. I would put it above season three. I would put it above season four. Okay, yeah, season, I'm fine with that. That's fine with me. That cannot touch A tier. It's not I even agree. close to A tier. I just think it's the most underrated season of all the Clone Wars seasons. Oh, probably. But there's like, a reason why. Yeah, yeah. That, I think that was the toughest thing. And because I feel like it bridges Revenge of the Sith pretty well. I mean, until we got until we got season seven. To know season seven. A tier. Dude, season seven. I would put it above season five. It's A tier. It does so much for a seven season show, especially an animated show for that caliber, the way it was received. Siege of Mandalore alone is is S tier to A tier. I think Siege of Mandalore is S tier. Bad Batch is B tier. Oh, that's bullshit. Dude, no! Luke, the logic that you did earlier, that's like you loving that because Siege of Mandalore was in Ahsoka. That's fair. Uh, Ahsoka and the walkabout in C tier. And so I think it all balances out in A tier. I think everything, if you combine all those rankings, it balances. All right. I think it's behind season five, and I think it's better than A New Hope. It is better than A New Hope. Dude, this is absolutely killing Harith, and I love it. The fact that the Revenge of the Sith is in B tier is whatever. F it. I don't care at this point. We're on uh, Rebel season one. That is, to me, C tier. C tier. The only memorable um, episodes from season one with um, the Wolf Waru 
with the Wookiees arc where Kanan reveals himself. Um, there's also when they face the Grand Inquisitor. Uh, Rebels season two is a B. Uh, B, B, but it's behind Revenge of the Sith. That is my hot take, is that Rebels season two is up there. I think you, I think you can, I know I can actually hear the argument for it. Okay, Char, where do you stand on this? I like it right where it is. Can I you? think it should go behind think... Last Jedi, but between Force Awakens. I can concede that. I agree. Rebel season three low b tier i will say it's season season three of rebels is in between season four of clone wars and season six of clone wars i was actually about to say the same thing too i was about to say i would put it above season six but below season season four, four. i know I, that's perfect i mean you get thrawn you get maul you get all of these different things you get kane and blinded by maul what pod wants agrees on stuff impossible yeah i know right and then you also get twin sons too Ooh, season four of rebels Season four, it's it's behind A New Hope. I would put it above New Hope. One of the best seasons of Star Wars television. Because season four just goes. It does. It does. But, like, the thing is, is, like, I would put... I don't think season four has any load. I think it just it just shoots straight, and then it just finishes strong. It doesn't, like... It, there's no, like, low points at all in the season. Char, is it better than Return of the Jedi? It is for me. Dude, Kanan's death has me in a chokehold. It feels so good putting it there, especially after Ahsoka with knowing that Ezra is okay. Like, it gives me relief. Okay, Resistance. Season one. I'll put it in front of Solo. I disagree. Absolutely not. Low I think eight. it's I think it's fine. I think it's fine right where it is behind Agreed. Rebel Season 1. Yeah, that's fine. Season 2? Right here. Goes right the f*** here. And I will not hear any arguments. B tier. Yeah, I agree. What? It's not... Whoa! It is. 100%. Uh, fine. I will concede. The way that it connected to Last Jedi is fucking beautiful. And the way that it, like, Tan's yeah, arc gets wrapped up is, is arc. Tales of the Jedi. I think it's... I think it's in between Solo and Clone Wars season. Tales of the Jedi? Really? Where you got it, Char? Tales of the Jedi, I have it in front of The Force Awakens. I honestly think Ooh. Tales of the Jedi, if it was just the Dooku episodes, it would go right here. It would go right the fuck here. See, I don't see I don't have much of a problem with with the Ahsoka. The Ahsoka episodes are incredibly average. They're the most average Star Wars I've ever seen. Yeah. They're incredibly fine. Like they're just the like du- they're taking the or leaving. Episodes do carry a Dude, lot. Yeah, of the yeah, way. yeah, yeah. That is true. Dooku. And they solve they yeah. solve a lot of questions. And honestly, um, not to sound like a Star Wars canon, it's not. But I think as much as I don't like E.K. Johnson, I think the Ahsoka episodes are worse than the Ahsoka novel. Bad Batch season one. Yeah, season one. I like that. Season two. Honestly, keep it where it's at. I would put it right here personally. No, no, it is D tier. It's C tier. Are you it's kidding me? Not worse than season one of Clone Wars or the Clone Wars movie. You are on crack if you think that. You're on crack. It's incredibly average. I think there's some really good episodes and then just kind of meh episodes. It's bull. It's way below average. Are you <laughs> kidding me? It's jarring. It's. <laughs> Ever since that Rex and Cody episode, well, not the, the the Cody and um, Crosshair episode, all the way up to when the kid hijacks the Marauder, that was the most unbearable time <laughs> ever. It was just whatever. It was like take it or leave it. Like I didn't feel anything. I was just like, uh. the, until we got to Pabu, it started getting pretty decent. Me and Luke are in agreement. Which I, is I, I, I'm, thing. I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement with that. I'm in. It's not worse than. Than Clone Wars uh, movie or Clone Wars season one. That is my final <sighs> stance. I would rather get frostbite than rewatch. Bad Batch season two. <laughs> but I'll give I'll give Bad Batch season two that the, the episode with Mayday with Crosser killing Lieutenant Nolan. That was pretty <laughs> As you're talking about, <laughs> I love when we're talking about Mando Char is still on Bad Batch. I know I would never watch it. I would rather get frostbite. Hey, that Mayday episode where they almost die in the snow. Great. Hey, that's at the very end of the season. That's when it gets pretty good. Hey, so anyway, Mando, season one, A tier. Not better than it's not better than Return of the Jedi or Revenge of the Sith. I will not hear. I'll, I'll, I'll literally. Die, I'll argue this one. Oh, you're gonna die on your hill. I will die on this hill. Char. Mm, me personally, I put it behind Revenge of the Sith. I. That's where I would put it too. It's one of the best seasons of Star Wars television. I'll put that. I would put if we're going. If we're looking. If we're looking at production quality, it's. I would put it on the same level as Andor. It's. It's a perfect oh, season no. of television. I think it's. I would put it on the same level as this. I think it belongs with Rebel season four and Clone Wars season seven, season five. I think it's a perfect season of television. All right. No, I agree with Harris. I changed my no, mind. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, never I'm mind. Good point. Good point. Good Mando point. Mando is Mando season one is the best season. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. Yeah. All right. Mando season two. I put it behind Clone Wars season six. No, yeah, I'd like it in between uh, Rogue One and whatever it's next to. Clone Wars season four. Yeah, that feels right. 
Yeah, I feel like that's right too. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing, even though people are gonna misconstrue this as a bad thing. It's the cameo season. Oh look, Ahsoka. Oh look, Luke. Oh look, a great dragon. Oh look, Boba Fett. Oh, here's the here's the elephant. All right, I'm gonna let everyone argue their cases. I'm gonna. <laughs> well, well, well. What do we have here? It's not even close to s or a it's not going in s tier luke that's the, i think that's the misconception you have of me with boba book of boba fett book no, of boba I, fett, I, I, but I would not agree. put it behind solo okay i will i will concede i will concede it's better than rise of skywalker but it's in c it's and in i'll c. put it behind clone War season four what Fuck yeah it's not on the same level as mando season two no char no the first three episodes are good four is whatever five is just an episode of the Mandal incredibly average episode of the mandalorian but chart i will be nice i will put it above the se season two of resistance that's as far as i am willing to go i would put it below season two of resistance honestly no put it above season two of resistance i i disagree that's a hard disagree but well that's I where know, it's gonna go i know brandon isn't watching this episode and agreeing with me i'll just say that all right obi-wan e tier <laughs> yeah it's such it's so b no it's it's b it's b it has to be behind Boba Fett. <laughs> it has to be. No, no. I think it's in between Return of the Jedi and Revenge of the Sith. I'll put it right up above Mando Season 2. Hot take. It's better than Season 2 of Rebels. It's better than The Force Awakens. It's better than Rogue One. It's better than The Last Jedi. Then Empire Strikes Back. We should just make a it's whole not, new Boba that it's just says, not oh, better. It's, 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 it's not. Fine. I am willing to concede. I am willing to concede. That that's feels fine. right. Do you think yeah. that's right? That feels right. Make and maybe have acid reflux, but I mean, that's fine. All right, Andor S tier. Andor is S tier. Andor is the best show in Star Wars. One way out. The prison arc alone gets in S tier. And I personally would put Obi-Wan in S tier, and I'm willing to say that that, that Andor is, in, is truly in S tier. It's the best Star Wars show out there. Obi-Wan is not S tier. Open one's not even... Well, that's, that's your so that's your opinion. Even... That's what I said. I said in no, my, my opinion. opinions are truth. You're just <laughs> Nebraska. Okay, Star Wars theory. Mando season three. Hot take. It's C tier. I put it behind Tales of the Jedi. Ah, uh -huh. yes. Agreed. Agreed. I was about to say C or tier two, but I was just like, I'm like, am I gonna get flamed for this? Because I think it's the worst season of live action television. It wasn't my favorite. Nothing. Uh, Mandalorian season. Um, I don't know I think how they to need describe to, my I feelings think, on it. It just felt I think, weird. I think for season four, what I want them to do is go back to what made see what Mand the Mandalorian so great in season one. What I love about season one is you could show someone Mandalorian season one in the vacuum, never seeing anything else on this list, and they would understand the story and follow it. If you show them season two, season three, they they, they could still follow it, but not as well as season one. The final show. Actually, wait, hold up. What? I'd put it like right here. Where are you putting Ahsoka? Above Rebel season three, but below Clone Wars season four. Ooh, actually, I kind of that because I don't think it's better than oh. I don't think Ahsoka is better than Obi Wan. Ahsoka, um, I'll put it high C. What? I'll put it in front of Rise. What? what? I would put it lower B. Low B. You you're putting it lower than Book of Boba Fett. How? Because um, Nebraska. Be real. I don't have be real. I never downloaded. <laughs> no, I agree with that. I agree with Ahsoka because I yeah, personally, fine. personally, I think Ahsoka does a lot of great things. I think her story's not over, so I think season Ron, two might be Ezra, I think on Reza. Sabine's arc. I think season two has a has chance to get higher in B and maybe Agreed. climb to A. I Agreed. just think season two. I think the first season is just kind of it's good, but I would put it in the same issue with. It's just, it's. I think it's good, but it also has a lot of take it whatever episodes. Yes. Yeah, so Empire uh, think, and Andor S tier. Yep. That's concrete. That, no, that's, I agree. Yeah, that that doesn't change. Season five is the best season of Clone Wars. Season four is the best season of Rebels. Season one's the best season of Mandalorian. Let's see what else is there. Obi Wan is mid. Uh, <laughs> Luke, you're just gonna take that on the chin. I'll just edit it out. And I'll, I'll, <laughs> and I'll make him say it's great, and then anyway, I, I I agree with this list. I agree with it too. I think that's uh, official. Yeah, as of 2023, this is where we're at, and I really I like it. Uh, what for? Uh, chart. What was your favorite moment from Pod Ones and from this year? From this year, um, it was probably 
Tate and David's match in the trivia in the first round of the trivia. That was that's a good one. It was not only competitive, but it was extremely entertaining. <laughs> I'll yeah. just say that. And also I'd say yeah. starting guess that guess that Star Wars character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That started as well. That was a very fun thing to do. And we're, and we're obviously we're doing, you know, Song of Ice and Fire and everything. But yeah. that was such a that was such fun content to make. Yeah. And just getting people involved and then just yeah. playing a guessing game of just like figuring out who we're thinking. It is and... very engaging. And I think that's yeah. what the best thing about it is, is that it gets you thinking and it's it's so much fun. Yeah, I would agree with that. Eric? Yeah. Um, for me, it's it's kind of hard because mm-hmm. just like Char, I have a specific match in mind for trivia, except it's been recorded. It has not been released. So technically it's in within this year. It's just not officially out. Yeah. But when that match comes out, you know what I'm going to be talking about. It's, I think it's the highlight of the first round, in my opinion. It's, a, it's the match that made me the most on my edge of my seat, the most stressed. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't know how this is. I don't know who's gonna come out on top. I don't know who's gonna win it. And it was such a good combination because we had so many people judging that match. It was like, it was like everything came together in that match. Yeah. And it felt like the culmination of everything we were building that first round. Uh, I mean, me being gone for like <laughs> eight months really makes it hard to pick a thing from this year honestly my favorite part was obviously celebration this year yeah. it's fun but yeah trivia was was a blast as well so and i can't wait to bring that back to you guys so um but yeah 2024 it's gonna be a great year guys we got a lot of stuff coming out we got a lot of topics that we want to touch on but we, we, we also got skeleton crew and acolyte and yes well, and high republic stuff and mm-hmm. i will also say if we're Talking about like the podcast itself, favorite moment. Honestly, I think we ended with the best banger possible guest wise. I was thoroughly surprised how good the Don Marshall episode turned out. That yeah. was such a fun conversation. Yeah, I love I and I loved how I like Don is just a down earth type of person, and I am so glad that we were able to have him on. It was so much fun. Uh yeah, that's also another one. I think my birthday, epi- I think the birthday episode was also a good one as well, to be honest. You guys put a lot of time and effort into that episode, and I really do appreciate that. What is a goal that you want to achieve for the channel? I want to hit 2,000 subs before we get to Hot D. little housekeeping. A little <laughs> thing of what you guys are fans not fans our people uh we'll be looking forward to in 2024 uh i feel like this could be our disney uh disney shareholders meeting like we're all around our phones and we're all giving like the stats of this year and what we're looking forward to next year um things that are slated are all on the books for 2024 trivia tournament will be back in 2024 we are getting the second round and everything all squared away now those episodes should be coming out as being released here probably what within the next like middle of january um yeah. those will be uh all all coming out the remaining slate of the two yeah. episodes that are left of season th- season yep. th- it's, it's weird because they're all in different rounds so season th- three round one the last two episodes of the first initial slate will come out and another thing that will be coming back once a month uh once a month on a friday uh uh, we will be joined by Chris, Star Wars lawyer, for Law Ones. Uh, it'll be our monthly stream with Chris. Uh, so that I think the first episode will be Anakin Skywalker and how he has been presented in media as a whole. So that be on the lookout for that. That'll be happening in January of 2024. And a new thing that I think we're all going to really enjoy. Pod Ones plays Boulder's Gate. Pod Me, ones Char, yeah, plot yeah, Pod Ones playthroughs. And that might be a segment uh um of some things that I want to do with these two being the older of the of us three having played retro video games that might be something that i've i want to do with these guys and we'll have them play games that i played when i was a kid so that's going to be a segment um and uh obviously reactions to hot d uh will be uh, a big thing as well um but that's kind of uh what you guys can look forward to from consistent content i mean the, the, major podcast, things. Will, the, major the, the podcast will always come out on thursdays so yeah that's kind of what we're 
looking forward to in 2024. The the people can find me at Hair Productions on TikTok and Instagram, Hair underscore edits on Twitter, and of course here on Pod Ones. Char, where can the good people follow you on the social medias? Good people, you can find me on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at Char Char G, as spelled right here. And you can find me here at the Pod Ones podcast every Thursday night. And you can follow me at Jedi Meister Eggs on all social medias and follow us at the Pod Ones on all social medias. Like, comment, subscribe so you never miss any of our content. But that's it. See you later, 2023. Hello, 2024. And as always, may the force be with you. Always. Always. See you guys.